If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that a little while back, I announced I was talking to investors about my startup AI box. We ended up getting such a huge influx of people talking to us that we kind of changed our strategy regarding fundraising. And we have a really exciting announcement coming soon. But if you were an investor that had previously reached out to me and jumped on a call, make sure to reach out again. I have some really exciting news to give to you. Or if you're an investor today looking to invest in an absolutely groundbreaking AI startup, I'm going to leave my email, jaden at AIbox.ai, in the description, and I'll give you the inside scoop. Today on the podcast, we have some really interesting news in AI, an acquisition out of Salesforce. They're planning to acquire rkit.ai, which is a low-code platform for building AI customer service agents. And of course, why do we need customer service agents if our software has bugs or people have bugs? And what do bugs have to do with all this? Well, let me tell you. Actually, this has nothing to do with it. I just wanted to bring this up. I live in Arizona, and in case you guys don't know, we have scorpions here. This is my least favorite bug in the world. For those that don't know, scorpions literally like they glow in the dark if you, sh if you shine a black light on them. So last night I was out in my backyard, you know, checking for scorpions because my wife is paranoid that one of our kids is going to get stung. I'm shining this black light around and we had three scorpions on our wall. I have to go and chase these things down with a shovel. I'm sure there's better ways to do this. But uh, yeah, anyways, terrifying prospect. So I hate bugs. And that is probably similar to Salesforce, why they're buying this company, because they too are looking for an AI solution to help mitigate the problems that arise from bugs. I don't know if that's related, but that's my tangent. I just wanted to tell you guys about anyways. In any case, let's jump into the podcast. Welcome to the world's number one AI podcast, AI Chat. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. In what I view as a fairly significant move deepening its kind of direction into AI and customer service, Salesforce recently announced, like I mentioned, that they're going to be acquiring this airkit.ai, which is really a, pla a platform specializing in enabling e-commerce businesses to create um, AI-enhanced customer service agents. And I think the, you know, the financial details around this whole acquisition, they have not released yet. But for people unfamiliar with Arkit's kind of trajectory, um, this is a Redwood City, California-based company, and it was actually founded back in 2017 by um, two people, Adam Evans and Stefan Ekien. So those that are unfamiliar with the names, um, those are names in kind of the Salesforce ecosystem. They previously actually took, um, you know, their big data venture, which was called Raltel Q, and that was actually purchased in the past by Salesforce for around $390 million back in 2014. So it's kind of interesting because this is, you know, two guys, they created a software company, sold it to Salesforce for $390 million. Now they've started another software company, and again, they're selling it to Salesforce. So it's kind of funny, right? Salesforce maybe just uses them as like a little startup incubator to feed them great companies. But uh, yeah, I mean, well played by them double startups, double acquisitions, both by Salesforce. So very uh, a dynamic duo for sure. In any case, originally AirKit emerged as a self-serve customer engagement solution, um, which was kind of aiming to bridge the often problematic data silos for businesses and streamlining processes like, you know, user onboarding, among other things. So fast forward to last month and the platform underwent a significant pivot. So rebranding as airkit.ai, the firm unveiled its pioneering product, which is a platform powered by GPT-4. And this innovation empowers companies, including um, names like OpenTable and ShipBob to craft highly specialized customer service chatbots. So these bots are proficient in handling a whole bunch of tasks from, you know, outdating order statuses and processing refunds to uh, providing detailed product insights. But just to go back a little bit and give you kind of the full picture on this, um, back in 2020, so uh, Air, airkit.ai actually raised $28 million 
from Accel, who obviously, you know, top a, uh, U.S. venture capital firm and Salesforce Ventures. Um, and that's kind of when they they launched this thing. So, you know, Salesforce, while they're buying them today, they've actually, you know, previously l- were investing in a round that raised $28 million. And I think the subsequent investment rounds saw the startup receive around a total of $68 million during over the course of its six years. Um, it really kind of cemented its ties with Salesforce uh, when AirKit got its platform listed on Salesforce's enterprise enterprise cloud marketplace. Um, they're kind of like app exchange last year. So I think it's really hard to overlook, you know, really this kind of a mounting excitement around generative AI platforms like ChatGPT. I think investors are definitely um, in a bit of a frenzy to kind of find and fund the next standout venture in this arena. They know that a lot of different areas in the economy are struggling and AI right now is kind of one of the, the silver linings that seems to just keep growing. Um, so I think given this backdrop, it's not very surprising that a generative AI enterprise with some really deep-rooted connections to Salesforce is going to kind of pique their interest. And I think that this uh, sentiment is really kind of accented um, by Salesforce's recent commitment to invest around $500 million in generative AI startups. I'd be really curious, um, you know, what they ended up actually buying AirKit for. It had already received around $68 million in funding. They're planning on investing $500 million. So this is, you know, obviously coming out of that. But yeah, I'd just be really curious to hear what the, the deal terms are. In any case, as really the business community is waiting uh, keenly for the deal's kind of culmination to see what's happening, um, which is anticipated by to really kind of this whole thing's supposed to close by January of 2024. Salesforce has charted out um, that they're very interested in this and airkit.ai is slated to kind of blend into Salesforce's established customer service platform, which is called Service Cloud. Um, So they're kind of getting directly integrated. And I think in a nod to its uh, expertise and leadership, Evans will retain the reins and continue to lead the business's future endeavors. So just because it's getting acquired doesn't mean, you know, the whole company's getting dissolved or whatnot and just kind of absorbed. But, uh, you know, Evans is going to continue to run it as he's been currently doing. I think for Salesforce and the broader AI community, this acquisition kind of signals more than a business transaction. It's kind of, you know, showing um, the growing importance of integrating cutting edge AI capabilities into reshaping customer service for the digital age. I also think this is a really good lesson for founders and for the enterprise to kind of see some of the ways that uh, partnerships and and some of the value that partnerships play, right? Obviously, this is a company that was heavily invested in by Salesforce um, and then heavily integrated into what Salesforce was doing. And then it kind of got to the point where Salesforce was like, hey, well, you know, we love what you're doing. We're already integrated. We've been with you for a number of years. I mean, they'd even bought a previous company from the founders. And so at that point, they just decided to uh, do a straight up acquisition um, and kind of bring them under Salesforce's umbrella. So really interesting lesson here. And I'm going to be curious to see if we see a lot more of that as a lot of AI companies right now are building partnerships and uh, getting investment from a lot of big software companies. It'll be interesting to see how that continues to play out in the future. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. 